we're asked to find the zeros of the given cubic function. The zeros are the inputs or x values the given output or function value of zero, which means to find the zeros, we need to solve the equation 2x cubed minus 6x squared minus x plus 3 equals zero. And since we have four terms on the left side, let's see if we can factor the left side using the grouping technique. The first step in factoring by grouping is to cut the expression in half, factor out the greatest common factor from the left and then the right, and if we have a common binomial factor, it is factorable by grouping. Factoring out the greatest common factor of 2x cubed minus 6x squared, we factor out 2x squared. We factor out 2x squared, we're left with the quantity x minus 3. We can always check this. Notice if we distribute 2x squared, we have 2x cubed minus 6x squared, which is the original expression. Now looking at the two terms on the right, the only common factor is one or negative one, and since we want a common binomial factor of x minus 3, and right now we have negative x plus 3, we will factor out a negative 1. Factoring out a negative 1 will change the sign of both terms, leaving us with a factor of x minus 3. Notice now we do have a common binomial factor of x minus 3, which means the left side is factorable by grouping. We will now factor out the common binomial factor of x minus 3, which leaves us with the factor of x squared minus 1. And since the product on the left must equal 0, either x minus 3 must equal 0, or the quantity 2x squared minus 1 must equal 0. Solving x minus 3 equals 0 for x, we add 3 to both sides, giving us x equals 3. Solving x squared minus 1 equals 0, we first add 1 to both sides, which gives us 2x squared equals 1. And now to isolate the x squared, we divide both sides by 2. Simplifying, we have x squared equals 1 half. And now to undo the squaring and solve for x, we take the square root of both sides of the equation. And remember, we are going to have two solutions. So when we square root both sides of the equation, we include a plus or minus on the right. The square root of x squared is equal to 1 factor of x. We have x equals plus or minus the square root of 1 half, which is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 divided by the square root of 2, and the square root of 1 is equal to 1, giving us x equals plus or minus 1 divided by the square root 2. So we have found the three zeros, 3, negative 1 divided by the square root 2, and positive 1 divided by the square root 2. But you may be asked to rationalize the denominator of 1 divided by the square root 2, so let's also show that. To rationalize the denominator, we need to eliminate the square root 2 from the denominator by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the square root of 2. Simplifying, we have plus or minus the square root of 2 over square root 2 times square root 2, which is equal to 2. So we now have our three zeros. We have two real irrational zeros, where one is negative square root 2 divided by 2, and the other is square root 2 divided by 2, and the real rational 0 is positive 3. Remember, these two real irrational zeros could also be given as negative 1 divided by square root 2 and positive 1 divided by square root 2. Before we go, let's verify this graphically. Here I've already graphed the cubic function using desmos.com. And remember, these zeros can be found by identifying the horizontal or x-intercepts of the function. And using Desmos, this is very easy because we can just click on the x or horizontal intercepts. On the right, we have the real rational 0 of 3, indicated by the ordered pair 3 comma 0, which again indicates when the input or x value is 3, the output or function value is 0. Notice how Desmos does not give the exact irrational x-intercepts or zeros, but on the left side, I did get the decimal approximations for plus or minus 1 divided by square root 2, which does match the horizontal or x-intercepts. So this graph does verify that our work is correct. I hope you found this helpful.